Good morning, guys. Today I'm going to be speaking with uh, Rachel Cup. Uh, we tried coming on, and uh, she was having some technical issues, so we'll start again. So um, welcome again. So Rachel uh, has been doing FP for about six years now, training out of uh, Katy, Texas, with AJ Martinez, and she was diagnosed at an early age with cerebral palsy. So for those that don't know what uh, that is, it's a a disorder that affects the brain and it, it affects uh, movement and posture. So you'll find people that have more tonicity or more rigidness with, with some of their movement and it generally affects either their one side of their body or certain limbs. In Rachel's case, uh, it affected her legs and her, her right side of her body. And with functional patterns, she's been able to gain use of her right hand. And she's gonna be coming on today and talking about her, her story. So let me go ahead and try to see if we can get it going. Awesome. Hey, Rachel. Hey. Uh, so it seems like your camera's covered. It may be reversed, hang on. Yeah, it was reversed. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, good morning, how's it going? Morning, all right. Thanks for joining. Yeah. So, uh, like I said in the intro, you were diagnosed with uh, cerebral palsy at a, quite a young age. So you've you've lived most of your life um, going. I'm guessing through through different therapies, correct? You've, you've yeah. tried out different doctors, different trainers. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like growing up uh, like that? Was it did it uh, affect your schooling? Did it affect uh, your friends? Did it affect uh, how did it affect your life, basically? It affected pretty much anything outside of school. Um, I had spent most of my time outside of school, either at a certain trainer's or on my way there. I couldn't do much outside. There were only certain places I was able to go comfortably where I could walk and not feel like I was going to fall over, which happened daily. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, several times a day. So were you going to these therapies every day, basically? Um, I went for, to two different types of therapists, an occupational therapist and a physical therapist. They separated them. But occupational is arms, physical therapist is legs. So I went twice a week. But pretty much every other day was focused on trying to work on getting everything better or as close to better as I could. Yeah. And how did you feel that those things helped as you, as you were growing up? Well, at the very beginning when I was still living in Arizona before I was four, um, we did a lot of really actually good training with a woman that focused on developmental disabilities and mm -hmm. not, um, sports medicine, which is what I got here, was the only like mainstream therapy that they had was for if you got hurt in football or soccer or anything like that, gymnastics. You'd start at a place to function and then you'd go down and then you'd come back up. So it was a lot quicker recovery time. So you're saying, so you're saying in, in Texas, you weren't able to find something that, that was outside of sports therapy. So no, no, like people specializing in, in, um, I guess with, uh, the disability like aspect of, of training. Not with training, the disability aspect, what I was able to find was neurologists and people focused on the actual brain part of the disability and not so much what that affects in my limbs. And for you, you didn't really have a need for, for those type of, of specialists, right? Other than diagnosing, that's, that's really kind of, yeah, yeah. Or I guess maybe they'll work with like some speech therapy or, or things like that. Or like well, I have a shunt in my brain mm -hmm. to get the pressure out because that's what it does is it builds pressure in your head mm -hmm. and it pushes against nerves that make it hard for certain limbs to work. I see. At least my type does. So that. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, you need. Outside of that, you need some sort of uh, therapy or training for your body to to be able to. Is it 
So when you when you go to the doctors, do they tell you, okay, go ahead and try to do as best as you can in terms of of moving? Uh, is it just like move so you don't lose? Like uh, if you don't if you don't use it, you lose it type of stuff. What's it? What do they recommend generally? Well, it's move the way that I can, but don't push myself too far because if I do damage myself, it's almost impossible to fully recover. Right. So if I get hurt, if I break an arm, if I break a le leg, like I broke my arm when I was six or so, it's still stuck up most of the time at a 90 degree angle just because it got used to being there from the cast. What happened with, with that? How did you break your arm? I fell. <laughs> it happened. I see. It just happened so much. My arm couldn't handle the trauma. So you kept you kept falling over and over, same pattern, and then eventually your it was like a continuous trauma on, on the arm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sort of snapped. Wow. And then, so they tell you that. So you're they're basically you're basically limited by what you're already able to do, right? So let's say if you if you only have use of of your left side, which I think is the case for you for the most part. Yeah. Uh, the things that they were telling you to do were were limited to to that size, correct? Yeah, I could do some stuff with grip on my right arm, but it wasn't much. And if I pushed myself too hard, I could it would cause problems later. You'd probably create some some discomfort. Mm -hmm. And uh, what were some of the things that that you found yourself doing based on that advice? What kind of what kind of things were you trying to do with? Uh, in terms of training your body, you're trying to, to maintain somewhat of a, of your movement. Well, as much as I could, I was trying to use two hands. I've got a lot of sympathetic movement between the two. So if I can open my left hand, I can open my right at the same time, but it's significantly harder to try and open my right hand on its own. And even mm -hmm. then it kind of, as you can see, not quite right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that was even, and, and you've gained some, some of uses of that, of that yeah. hand since starting FP. Okay. Yeah, so, I've gained quite a bit of usage. I can actually hold on to things without dropping them, because that's why I used both hands, was my right hand would eventually give out from holding on for too long, which at the beginning was about five minutes wow. before it would give out. So, so not only like movement, you're also been able to to create some sort of endurance, yeah, uh, type of 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 gains. Awesome. So, um, so talking a, a little bit more about some of the the therapists that you that you saw, was it any different from what you were doing on your own? What you were doing with with the therapist, or was it kind of the the same? The only difference was the equipment. I had access to a lot more machinery than I would have in my own house, but it Kinda was like a lot what, of stuff. What equipment were you guys using? Um, they had us had me doing leg presses. Um, they had me do a lot of different, like, pulley mechanisms, stuff like that. Which, okay. And then uh, were you able to replicate any of that on your own at home, or were you trying not to... Not safely. Not safely. That's yeah. Got it. And then you said, go ahead. Was, Sorry. Part of the reason was because I, like, my compensations and my legs and everything, I can do maybe a couple reps before something would want to give out. And yeah, so, yeah, I just. So there's a, a high, high risk, especially when, let's say, when you were doing something like a leg press, uh, you were pro they were probably loading it to, to sort of strengthen. So it also created a bigger risk because you had a certain amount of weight on the machine that you were having to to uh, to fight against, right? Yeah. At the end, it was about 300 pounds. 300? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, they just, they would load it and I'd be able to do it, but it wouldn't always be correct. My knee placement, the way the tension's going. Right. So what what was going through your head when you were seeing that you I'm I'm guessing you didn't start at three hundred pounds. You probably started at fifty or maybe a hundred pounds. So what was your, your thinking when you saw that you you were progressing, right? Because you, you got all the way to three hundred pounds in that specific motion, but 
maybe you didn't see as much progress in the things that you wanted to do, like go for a walk or not having to fall as much, things like that. Yeah. So my balance wasn't any better at the end of them. My stamina wasn't better, but my overall muscle strength was getting stronger. Individual muscles were getting stronger so I could work on trying not to do those things on my own. But I see. Were you it, able to stand for, for longer? Or what, what were some of the things that you felt improvement on? Well, at that time, I had AFO orthotic braces on. Mm -hmm. So ankle foot orthotics kind of forces my ankle into a 90 degree angle strapped all the way up to just below my knees. Mm -hmm. I could stand for hours and not even notice that my entire, like both legs had gone completely numb. I see. So, so, so with the, you said you, you felt stronger with the, with those exercises. So where, where did you notice the, the, like how did, those gains apply to uh, your everyday life? Did you find more comfort in, in certain things? Was it standing up or what was it? Or you well, just felt like you're, or you just felt a little stronger, but but it, it didn't really seem to apply to too much. The most it did was I was able to get up off the ground after I fell over a little bit easier, but that would last for maybe a couple of days after I did the exercise and then go away again. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. It didn't really last. It didn't. Yeah. So it didn't. So so it seemed like you were getting stronger. You were pushing more weight, but it, you weren't really getting too much benefit. It seems like from from it, like because no. those because that seems to be very important if you're trying to improve your quality of life. Right. First of all, not not falling as as often, and if you do fall, being able to to get up uh, easier and and try to minimize as much risk as as possible. So now let's go a little bit into how you started to transition outside of that. Um, you were mentioning that you did find some sort of uh, trainers that w would be focusing more on the sports medicine or the sports performance aspect of it. So what was it that made you um, go away from, from that and, and what happened uh, in the sense of you switching over and, and trying to find something else? So it started with just, well, I did my last stint of sports medicine at the children's hospital in downtown. Mm -hmm. They got rid of the regular therapy se section there and it just became an entire floor for sports medicine. So oh, I see. that was $600 per 45 minute session and I needed two of them a week. Wow. So, so let's do the math. That's 1200, uh, every two weeks. So that's 2,400 mm -hmm. a month to do some leg presses. Yeah. And to have them like try and grab my ankle with my leg completely straight and push it towards my head. Yeah. So let's get into that. So a lot of the symptoms, uh, are muscle tenacity, right? So you're, you're, certain certain muscles are they tighten up and they they're contracting uh as far as i understand it uh constantly so it seems like you need um either the opposite muscles to contract to get gain a little more balance or some form of of uh decreased tenacity so what they would do like you said is they would try to get more range of motion and assume that that's what that's what's going to get your muscles to to decrease so how how was that like uh you said they were they were what, what were they using to to get the the stress or the range of motion yeah they just like grab my knee and my ankle and just push as far as close to my head as they could wow and then yeah. would they would they try to hold that there were mm -hmm. they were you in pain while while that was happening it hurt the first couple times, but you get used to it after. Yeah, your your body kind of adapts, right? Mm-hmm. After just, a decade. Just, so, yeah, yeah, just probably not in a in a in the, in the way you wanted to adapt. No. Yeah. So 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 it was expensive. So that was one one of the things. And then at that time, did you feel like okay, I'm doing this, but it's and like you said, you've done it for a decade or more. 
um, did you realize that it, it wasn't really what what was your outlook uh, at that at that point with uh, I guess you were in your teens, right? So you were in, in high school still? I was 13. I was just about to go in. Yeah. So what was your outlook then with all that was happening? And did you feel like, okay, this is eventually going to get better? They say it's, it's what's it's helping. Did you believe it? What was it like? Um, they said I kept plateauing. So they couldn't get enough of an incline on my abilities in the amount of time they'd expect, which the amount of time they expected was sports medicine time, which is a few mm -hmm. months. I'm not going to just skyrocket in a couple of months from where I started. That's not how it works. So they were planning right. on, like I said, knee surgeries, um, hand surgeries all the way at my wrist and every single finger. What was the surgery going to entail? Um, they would basically try and force those connections that had been disconnected. I have, um, but when I started training with FPI, I had no muscle from here down. Mm -hmm. Like it just completely d diminished over time. Now it's about here. It's starting to grow back into those spots. We see. So they were going to attempt to maybe reconnect some tissues in the hopes that, that you gain some, some motor, some motor connection there. Yeah. I see. So then, so yeah, so, uh, so they were recommending surgeries and at the time, was it you or your parents that kind of, I'm sure you didn't want to go down that path? No, I did not want to go down that path. What um, was the prognosis with the surgeries? Um, I'd be working on recovering from the surgery instead of recovering from being born with CP for probably the rest of my life when it comes to my hands and they weren't sure how the knee surgeries would actually take and I could be wheelchair bound from the surgery on. Wow. So, and without the surgery, you were somewhat able to stand. Mm -hmm. Were you able to walk? Yeah, I could walk, but you were able to walk. So, so yeah. what they were recommending was almost like taking more function away uh, from you and hoping I could rebuild it later. But yeah. that recovering from surgery would be easier than recovering from this. Yeah, that doesn't make sense, sense at all. Mm. So, okay, so then, so you guys weren't considering surgery. So then what led you to, or how, how did it come about with you finding something like uh, FP? So it started with um, just it cost way too much for something I could get a personal trainer at a gym for. So and use the equipment there as well, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just did that. We stopped going to the ones the doctors are recommending, and we just found a trainer at the local gym. And that was AJ? And, uh, yeah, and that was AJ. And then a couple weeks, maybe a month after that, he started getting into FP, trying to figure out what would actually work. And yeah. Yeah, so I spoke to AJ a little bit, and he actually said that you were primarily the reason why he ended up looking at something like FP. He was training you. He realized that what he was doing wasn't really helping, that you've been doing it for so long, and it wasn't helping. So he was trying to figure or find something else that might, um, yeah, that, that at least was different so, so it could possibly help, and that's how he ended up ended up doing that. So I think, I believe he was training you for a couple of weeks or a couple of months before he found. So, so you, you've basically been um, a client of his since he first started. So how, how has that been different for you? How has that been like, uh, I guess, how, how was it different in the beginning once he kind of started getting, changing his, his style of training or his method of, of training you? Well, the things that we were doing started actually lasting. So the little effects, the little things that would change, it wouldn't be gone by the next time. It would still be there and I can build on it instead of having to start over from scratch every week. 
So, but, so, you, so you're able to progress, you actually mm -hmm. progress, not plateau. What were some of the things that uh, were different that, that you guys were focusing on? Um, like some examples, maybe instead of the black like, presses, what were you guys doing? Um, we were doing um, wood chops, a lot of um, slow motions, chambering, not anything. Like, so I can focus on where all my limbs were what my grip actually looked like with my right hand. And if I needed a break, we could take a break without me have like fall out, just dropping the thing. Mm -hmm. like my... Yeah. So you mentioned, you mentioned before you were able to grip and that you didn't have much muscle down the, down your forearm to your wrist. So, mm -hmm. I posted a, a video of you being able to to do the thumbs up and you're being gaining more function. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess describe a little bit of how, how that's been like, uh, maybe what your parents have thought so far, um, because that's incredible. You were going to get s surgery that might work, but probably wasn't going to work. And then now you're, you're starting to build muscle where, where, where you didn't have any before. It's been, it still surprises me. It still amazes me that I can even just lift my own thumb. It's just, there's so much that for almost two decades now, I've been told by every doctor I've seen is never going to happen. And now I'm out of the braces, the leg braces. I don't need to worry about falling over every day. It happened. Yeah, was, yeah, it hasn't happened for two years. I haven't fallen over just wow. on my own for two years. Yeah, that's so. amazing. That's great. So what? So you're out of the braces now. Uh, mm -hmm. Were you were you walking before with the with, when you had the braces on? Were you able to walk at, at all? Yeah, I could walk with the braces on, but I had to have a wall, or I even had a cane for when we went camping. Because I, for when I had them off, I just, I wasn't stable enough. I couldn't slow my walking down enough to focus on where my feet were. I'd wind up stepping on like the top of my toes, not picking my feet up enough and just sliding. But, and that was eventually what would cause you to trip and fall over. Well, I'd even kick my, myself on my own ankles right. and just trip myself. So that happened. That hasn't happened in, in two years, and now you're you you don't have the braces. Are you walking? Are you walking around now? Yeah. Um. Yep. Yeah, fine. Yeah. No. Awesome. Yeah, I saw you were you were starting to throw a ball as well, which is, um, did that ever, ever occur to you that that you were going to be throwing balls at a wall with your mm -hmm. right hand? Definitely not with my right hand. Yeah. Just at the very beginning that's one of the later ones but at the very beginning i couldn't even hold that with my right hand even with my left hand on the other side it would not stay it would just keep closing so so uh so you said you were holding a ball on the left hand to kind of help the, yeah the right hand and then just to take it, on some of the weight so that it can focus on its grip and oh actually... grabbing it i see mm -hmm. i see got it and then now you're you're able to to hold more weight that's awesome yeah so have you have you you were mentioning that you reach or that the doctors were telling you that you would plateau, right? You would do certain exercises, certain motions, kind of progress a little bit, but then lose all, all of that. Uh, any plateaus that you've experienced so far uh, training with AJ? Have you, have you felt like you've, you guys have gotten, um, I'm sure there's been places where maybe you, you slow down a little bit, right? And then what you guys, you guys try to figure it out. Yeah. So there's right. some things I'm not, fully capable of yet but we do test them just to see and then adjust them and try and push past and get to the point where i can get to those things and i do progress it's just sometimes slower so, but i haven't like flattened out it's not a section of not progression got it even when and, i was injured we'd still be like progressing right so, i overdid my ankle and um a few years ago and we still found ways to just work around it. Mm -hmm. It just like the muscle tensed and 
exploded and my shoulder did the same thing. Just wow. wasn't used to the new tensions, but we found ways to work around it, work with it, make it better, press past mm -hmm. it and still right. for good. And then now still, yeah. And how are those areas doing, doing now? Ankle's perfectly fine. My shoulder will pop sometimes, but it's not painful and it's not worrying. So. Yeah. Are you, so did you have anything like that happen before? And what was your, because uh, for me, when I was in a lot of pain and I would have episodes, they would stick around for a while. And I didn't really know if, how, when I was going to get better if I, if I did. Now, if I feel something that I, <clears throat> maybe something feels tight or like a little twinge or something like that, it's, it's a, I know that I'm not worried about it because I know how to address it. And I know that uh, it's not, it's not such a, like a critical mistake or, or, or a bad, I'm not, I'm not breaking a, a tendon or something like that. So uh, do you experience the same thing? Were, were, did you have episodes before? Maybe like a, like a fall, I guess would be one of the bigger ones, but did you so have an episode I've like that before? I've fallen over so much that my knees um, no longer bruise at they all. No longer what? Bruise. Like bruise, there's no okay. work from it at all. It just stopped affecting it. But, so they they would bruise before you said, mm -hmm. yeah, in an instant. But, was it from was it from using them like bending them, or was it from uh, daily from falls pressure on them? Anything? Yeah, just daily falls. Um, but oh, daily I, falls. Good. Yeah, good. But they'd always be sore and they'd always be in pain, and there's nothing I could address at the gym that wouldn't or at whatever trainer I had before that would just kind of counteract it, it would be more, okay, we've worked on directly on the knees now, but now I can't walk at all because now everything around my knee hurts as well. They're sore, yeah. Yeah. So I'd be yes. limping now. Now tell me a little bit about how that being in those situations, I'm sure it was very frustrating for you uh, how was your sleep like? How was your uh, emotional state like? Did it affect your, your school? Did it affect, uh, I guess, your, how did it affect your life being in, in that discomfort and, and pain all the time? Well, it did a lot of just limiting where I can go and what I could actually do. Any outside school event a lot of those were difficult. I could walk around the event, but I couldn't do any of the things that were there. So there's almost no point in going in the first place. Right. They try and come up with accommodations, but most of the accommodations that they make are for people with mental disabilities, not physical disabilities. So I was knocked into that category as well, just so I'd have something. Right. What was that? What was, yeah. So I'm sure that was frustrating for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause, um, go ahead. Yeah. The only thing that's is affects my brain is that shunt and that doesn't affect any of like my development in my brain at all. Just my limbs. So it's just frustrating yeah. after a while. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a misconception with that, right? Because let's say if you're if you're having difficulty walking or if you're having difficulty moving uh, your hand or your limb, it's often associated with also some sort of a, a mental disability or, or or something of that sort. So did you also feel like that affected the way people perceived you or, or they interacted with you and uh and has that changed since you've been at all since you've been kind of able to to move more and, and and have a better outlook on on what your future is like yeah they were they were a lot more careful when they were talking to me a lot more like subtle just not quite talking down to me but not 
thinking I'm at their level type conversations. Mm -hmm. um, every therapist I had before AJ would talk to my parents and not to me, even though I was the one actually doing the things every day. And for the later half of it, I was, like I said, I was a teenager at the end of it. I'm fully capable of knowing what my own limitations are with my own limbs and the consequences of not being able to do this. Right. Not being able to recover any movement at all. So it was a lot of that. Um, I had my counselor and my gym teacher in middle school go behind my back and try and get me into a, um, the special ed education gym classes, mm -hmm. which would have taken me out of the AP courses I was in, which were wow. high school credit classes, would have really screwed me up. And so they were, what, what was the, do you know what their reasoning was behind doing that? My gym teacher didn't like the, the fact that I couldn't physically do all the things that I, I was limited in what I can do, how fast I can move. So he wanted to get you out of his class. Mm -hmm. Got it. And they were willing to sacrifice your, the, the work or yeah, your AP classes, which is, mm -hmm. which is, it takes work to get into and it, it's going to help you in your future as well. Wow. Yeah. So, and they did it. Like they told me at my last period class of the last, like, and then told me not to, to go to this schedule and not my original schedule starting the next day. Wow. So I didn't get any say in it or any chance to, you know, defend myself against it. So they ended up, do they ended up doing it. They, they took you out. Um, I went home and I told my grandmother who told my mom who screamed at them that morning and then they just told me to go to the regular classes. I see, okay. <laughs> Which was a problem because the teacher had to record everything on paper because they'd already removed me from the system. Wow. Mm -hmm. So at the time, I'm sure you felt, like you said, they probably, um, yeah, they, they, they wanted to take advantage of, of, of you in, in a sense, and you probably felt like you weren't able to, to stand up for yourself uh, at the time. Has that changed at all? Have you, or... I guess just going off on that, you're still answering it, but um, has, it, has anything changed in that regard? Have you, had, uh, have you found yourself in situations where something similar might, have, um, might happen and then you, you catch it and you're able to, to stand up for yourself in the moment? Yeah, well, I can definitely see when I was in high school and I was still required to take a gym class that they want to please about the fact that I couldn't actually do a lot of the things or, as well as everyone else. But basically I told them that I couldn't do it, but that I could do other things during that time, like weight room. There's no point to a lot of the things in weight room mm -hmm. for me it would damage me worse, but I could work on, at the time I'd already started training with AJ, so I could work on the things we were working on there and just mark down everything that they were doing so I could pass the quiz at the end. Because mm -hmm. we had a quiz for weight room, a quiz for soccer, for football, for everything like that. I see, so were you, you were able to, to do that? You were able to yeah. work on, on FP during school? Wow, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. As awesome. long as I was doing something, mm -hmm. they were yeah, okay. Right. And I could do some things to the best of my ability, but it's just not to the best of everyone else's ability. Right. That's where the problem was. Yeah. So now um, I'm guessing you graduated high school a couple years ago, right? So, so what are you up to now? Uh, are there other things that you're you're able to to do now? Uh, I think AJ mentioned that that you're doing a little bit of boxing. Can you can you talk a little bit about how yeah what you what you're up to now? Well, yes, I do quite a bit of boxing. I actually have um, won a 
his old um, punching bag things. Mm-hmm. But it, it helps with my rhythm of the actual motions because that's a lot of where my problem is. Like I can move a limb, but the limb that's supposed to move with it, the, uh, the other one, may not in that same order. So I'm working on that a lot. Um, I still train the AJ three times a week, including tonight. And yeah, college basically is just most of where I'm at. Yeah, anything in anything particular in your experience in college that you, I'm, I'm guessing it's a bigger campus, right? So are you, uh, are you finding yourself easier? Maybe, obviously, if you would have gotten the knee surgeries, maybe possibly in the wheelchair, that would have been more of a, of a challenge. But even with the braces, um, yeah, have, how, how's that? Have you felt like that's been a lot easier to, to, to be able to go to college and be able to walk around, go to your classes, be there on time, et cetera? Yeah. So... I spread my qu- my classes out so I have a larger gap in between them. So I have the time to actually make it there. I can do some stretches in between if I need to. If like I've been sitting there for a couple hours, sometimes I'll get stiff. But I have that and I don't have to ask permission for an elevator key because there is no elevator key. It's just an elevator. Mm-hmm. I see. Awesome. Um, okay, and then what are the things have you noticed, uh, let's say, doing the work that you're doing with FP? We spoke a lot about the, the physical movement and the training. How about uh, things outside of that? Has your diet changed? Have you been getting outside? Have you been limiting screen time? Things like that. Have you implemented some of the other things and have those helped? Um, yeah, yeah, I have been. Um, I've been trying to get outside. I used to have to get up at like 5.30 for school anyway, so I just kind of stick to that schedule and head outside for the sunrise, and I've been trying to ease my way into spending more and more time out there so I can spend more and more time in the sun without burning up because I'm very susceptible to sunburns. So so like from the evening, from dusk and work backwards, going out earlier and earlier, Mm-hmm. Dawn staying out later. That seems to be working. I've, yeah, I've actually completely cut grain from my diet. Grains? Oh, yeah. Which is tough because pasta is, was a major part of my diet for a long time. So I just replaced it with like spaghetti squash instead of spaghetti and stuff like that. Have I you noticed any difference in? in your training from that? Well, I can hold muscle mass and I can hold like positions longer without straining. Awesome. Why not? Yeah, so, um, and then going off on the, on the other stuff that, uh, the emotional and the, the mental health aspect of it, you mentioned that maybe in the past you wouldn't have done something like this um, like coming in and talk, talking about your experience. So anything else that, that has changed in, in, on, on that note with uh, maybe how you relate to your family, to your friends, um, even how you maybe uh, act with your trainer, with AJ, uh, anything else that, that you've noticed a, a significant change? Well, for the longest time, I actually... I'd avoid using my right hand as much as possible just to avoid the questions about it. Mm-hmm. And even though I live in Texas, I would wear pants all year round so no one saw the braces. Mm-hmm. So I'm not doing stuff like that to cover for the disability anymore. I'm not trying to pretend they don't exist and hope no one notices. So I can, I don't need to do that for people just treat me like a human and not something else anymore. Just very useful. Awesome. Have you noticed your stress? Say that again. Say it again. A little more comfortable just going out and existing. (laughs) Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah, and and it's something that a a lot of people deal with, and I think it's it's great that you're able to come on here and and talk about. Um, I I've never uh, trained anyone with uh, cerebral palsy, so I wasn't very familiar with um, with the experience, but. Um, I've learned a lot and I'm sure people have as well. So I appreciate you coming. It's been great seeing coming on. It's been great seeing your progress throughout the years. And I know that you're still working a lot. And I know AJ's still working a lot and, and you guys are going to keep getting better and better results and looking forward to seeing you. Uh, yeah. Seeing your progress. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so, so Thanks so much for coming on, Rachel. Of course. Okay. Thanks everyone for watching.